I'm Tony Doherty and welcome to Max's Muscle TV. Really great show for you tonight, folks, as we head back into the gym for a killer shoulder workout and tonight sees us back in the kitchen for the first of our new look nutrition segments when we tackle the very popular topic of eating to put on size. Okay, first up though, it's time for a change of pace as we catch up with one of Australia's top V8 supercar drivers. He's Bottolo Racing Team's gun, Dave Reynolds. Not only is Dave an elite driver, but he's an elite athlete that requires enormous amounts of conditioning to do what he does. As we found out recently, we caught up with him for a chat and his Muscle TV exclusive. I've been racing for about 22 years. I started when I was six years old, racing go-karts. My old man got me involved. Always had a passion for racing and motorsport. Got my brother a go-kart, got me a go-kart. You know, one thing led to another. At one point, my entire family, my mum, dad, my brother, and I were racing at one weekend. My proudest racing achievement probably would be Bathurst last year when I finished second, nearly won the race. Myself and Dean Canto, we were basically underdogs going into the race and missing the race by three tenths of a second and going down to the last couple of laps, you know, that was a pretty cool achievement. Some of the physical things we have to deal with. In racing, it's very, very hot. You know, the engine, the gearbox, all creates a lot of heat. It can be anywhere from, say, on a normal day when it's 25. Outside, it's 55 inside, and we can lose anywhere up to six, seven litres of water during that race, and that's another big thing we have to deal with. But as far as the fitness side, most of us are really aerobically fit. You're aerobically working to change gears because, you know, the steering weight's very heavy. You know, the brake pedal takes, you know, anywhere up to 80 kilos of force to activate the brake pedal. You know, the gear stick, every gear change is 20 kilos. So you're always constantly working and you're always scanning around for other cars and see what's going on. We can turn around and do marathons, half marathons quite easily. We have to be sort of that fit to do it. My big passion is triathlons and long distance triathlons. So, you know, I'm hard into the Ironman side and you know I'd love to do a full Ironman one day. I've done a half and I've done a Olympic distance ones before. Our sport's about aerobic capacity and having the aerobic endurance and going for two hours and keeping the concentration up. You know, our heart rate in the cars anywhere from 160 to 180 beats per minute, you know, which is it's pretty high and it stays there for two hours. Our championship goes basically from March till December, and we've got test days either side of that, so we don't really get a break. You know, we might get a few weeks off around Christmas, but, you know, we're always training, always at the workshop trying to improve the cars. There's always something to do. My whole diet plan is based on low GI food to keep your insulin levels down, which increases your aerobic capacity. It stops you getting sore and fatigued. Anything with high fat, high protein is low GI, so that's the theory of my nutrition. It's all about eating good quality carbohydrates and sticking to your high fat and high protein diet. I love the whole routine of it and, you know, the nutrition side of it and, you know, writing all your nutrition down and, you know, getting your ratio of your carbs, fats and proteins correct. Just a standard day at the racetrack, eat three eggs and probably half an avocado. Try and eat rye bread, that's a lower GI bread. The problem is when you're racing, you're always doing stuff, you always got media commitments, you're always in and out of the car, and you sort of can't have big meals, so you've got to sort of graze during the day. So I eat a lot of Max cookies, love them, they're ace. Bananas, apples, things like that, just keep yourself topped up. After a race, I just eat my normal steak or chicken and a few vegetables and drink a lot of water. Go. <laughs> Some of my training regimes would be like, I'd do a long ride, say anywhere from two to four hours, or a long run, and then a short day, which would be just a gym session, which involves a lot of core strength, TRX. So I've got this certain formula that I stick to that's a certain heart rate that I can't go over and I have to stay in, in the window of. It's 180 minus your age, and you can't go over that. So my maximum heart rate, since I'm 27, it would be 153. So anything over that, you stop burning fat. And the whole idea of that program is to teach your body how to burn fat more effectively, which gives you your aerobic capacity, which helps muscular endurance. One more, you go. Well a part of my training is also measuring my hydration. So I'll weigh myself before I go out for a ride and write down the humidity and the temperature. 
and then weigh myself when I get back and find out how much water I've lost in that time. And then we graph it and then we can work out, you know, if it's 50 degrees, I'm gonna have to drink, you know, a litre an hour, or if it's, you know, 15 degrees, I have to drink half a litre an hour. I've got a little button on the steering wheel that I can press that says drink on it, pretty simple and it squirts water in my mouth as I'm going around. But I mix my own water. I don't like straight water because it doesn't absorb quick enough. So I just put sea salt and sugar. Some of my immediate goals this year in V8 Supercar, I'd love to win Bathurst. Second was pretty cool, but you know, first would be so much cooler. I'd love to give FPR its first championship. What about racing that I love so much? I love the competition side of it and I love driving fast cars. There's nothing better than going to a track and being the fastest person there, you know, it's sort of you can hold your head high at that. And also working with a massive team environment. We've got 65 people here at Ford Performance Racing. Everyone's part of the bigger picture and, you know, it's not just about me driving the car at the end of the day, it's about, you know, the engineers working on the car, the mechanics putting everything together, the engine boys, you know, building the engines, making more power for us. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool when you come here and, and just see how it all happens.